this video I'm going to show you how you can bring your machine data into Snowflake. Uh, as an example, we will use data from an OPC server. So I've added an OPC module as my input in this flow. And I've already run this so that we can see what the data looks like that we get from this uh, input. Uh, so on the right hand side, we see some data and we will get one message for each sensor whenever the value changes on that sensor. And when you store this type of sensor data in a database, there are two common table layouts that are being used, sometimes called narrow and wide. With the narrow format, you store one sensor value per row, uh, typically with a timestamp, uh, a name of the sensor or source, and the actual value. While in the wide format, you store a collection of sensor values in each row, and you use the column names to identify uh, the sensors or the sources, and then you just store the values in each row. In this case, we're using an OPC subscriber, where the OPC server will push values to us whenever uh, the values change. So we don't know when we will receive data. In this case, it will just come in um, as soon as some values change. So that matches perfectly with the narrow format where we can store one sensor value at a time whenever it arrives. So we will use that for this, uh, this demo. And the database that I've created in, in Snowflake has three columns. It has a timestamp, it has a sensor name, and a sensor value, or tag as I call them in the database. And if we look at the data we get from the OPC server, we can uh, find those uh, values here. So we have a name, we will use that one. We have a value, uh, we want to use that, and we also have a timestamp when this data was collected coming from the OPC server. So these are the three values that we will use uh, and map to the columns in our Snowflake database. Now the names in the database are not exactly like they are here. So the first step will be to uh, do a little remapping of those um, values so that it matches what we have in the database. Oh, sorry for that. So let's add some mapping rules here. So we wanna take the name and uh, we will create a new object called Snowflake. And then we assign that to the column tag name, sorry. Same thing with the value. We select that. Uh, and it's called the column is called tag value. And then finally we wanna use the timestamp from the OPC server, and that was called source time stamp like that. And that should map to a column name, which is timestamp. So with that, we have selected the three values that we're interested in. We can skip the other values that we received. We will not use them in this demo. Um, and let's quickly run this to see what we have created before we add the Snowflake connector to this to send off the data to Snowflake. So now we get, this is the output from that second module, the property mapper, and we have now created this Snowflake object where we have three properties that matches the column names in Snowflake and with the corresponding values. So the final step will then be to add the Snowflake insert module that will send data to Snowflake. So let's add that at the output here. We need to set the credentials for Snowflake, specify the table we want to use, and what data we want to send there. And it's this Snowflake object we want to use. Sorry, I should spell that correctly, like that. So now it will pick up this object that we just created, matches this name here, Snowflake and it will send that and store it in this table that uh, we call narrow in uh, Snowflake. So let's see if that works. Let us run this again. Yes, that is working fine. We get a successful response from the Snowflake module. So this data is now being uploaded to Snowflake. Now I stopped the flow, but if we continue to run this flow, it will continuously push data into Snowflake. So that is how easy you can set up a flow to push data into Snowflake and to see that that is actually working as a final step. We, let's just see if we can get the data back from, from Snowflake. So I will just add a trigger and then we will use the um, 
Snowflake select module to see if we can read back this data that we just created from Snowflake. We will use the same table. We add credentials. Yeah, let's call it Snowflake on when we get it back as well. So it should be the same. It's not that much data in this table now since we just added a few values so we can read the whole table. So I will skip the rest of the settings here. So let's try that and let's stop this other part so we don't get more input data and see if we can read back data from Snowflake as well. And there we are, we got the whole table coming back. So it comes back as an array with all the records that we currently have in that database uh, with the three values that we have stored uh, for each of these um, uh, sensor readings, timestamp, tag name, and tag value. So that seems to work. So we can both send data to Snowflake and get data back from Snowflake into a cross flow and do some processing with that data. Now I use the, these two basic modules where you don't need to know anything about SQL syntax and stuff. If you want to do more advanced things, there is also an execute the module where you can enter any SQL statement and execute that against your Snowflake instance. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.